just a quick video to show where I'm coming up with the assumption that Joseph Smith was not a polygamist. Yes, he was not a polygamist. So I started out, um, I was just doing research because I didn't believe after I read and analyzed Jacob chapters two and three, that there was any way that someone can be a man of God and be a polygamist. So um, these were some of the breadcrumb trails that I followed to, to come to that conclusion. So um, in Facebook, I came upon a group called Identifying Joseph Smith's True Teachings and More. And there is a lot of links and good information in there. From there, I was led to um, this work from in the Restoration Bookstore. So Joseph Smith III, um, who became the prophet of the Restored Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, um, and who was the oldest son of Joseph Smith and Emma, um, made it part of his life's work to um, research um, his father and these claims that he was a polygamist because his mom always asserted that his father was not a polygamist and he never saw any, um, I think he was 11 when his father died and, and he never saw that his father was a polygamist. That was, that was never, there were never any indications. Okay. And um, so this is called the Restoration Bookstore, and it is, um, I think, from that group, from um, members of the um, Restored Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, but there is a specific book um, called Joseph Smith Fought Polygamy. It was written, I believe, by a husband and wife team. Um it's really inform full of information. Um, and one of the big things that I learned from here is about Cochranism. Let me see if I can do this. I'm not good at this. Um, so I always had been taught that polygamy in the United States began with the Mormon church, that we were the founders of the polygamous movement. But it turns out there was a movement before us um, called Cochranism. And it started um, in Saco, Maine, um, on the East Coast. And um, basically, um, um, the, the 12, when they went to do their missionary work over on the East Coast, um, got introduced to this group in Saco, Maine, and actually had a fair amount of success in gaining converts out of this group. And this group was practicing what they called spiritual wivery, which allowed them to um, to swap wives and to have free love and sex. It was some pretty crazy stuff. And one of the um, missionaries... Um, that went there was Brigham Young. Okay. Here is a book and it is called, let me see if I can close this, get it out of the way so we can see. It's called Saco Valley Settlements and Families, Historical Biographical, uh, well, let's see if I can get this to come up so I can show you. Um, nope. Okay. So we're on page 324. So I'll go to the beginning of it. Just hopefully I can remember that was the page I was on. All right. So we will go here. So this is an actual copy of this book. Okay. Here it is. Historic. Okay. Let me go up some. Saco Valley Settlements and Families. Historical, biographical, genealogical, traditional. Whoa. Backing up one and legendary. Um, embracing the most important events in the towns on the Saco River from their plantation to the present with memorials of the families and individuals 
instrumental in the settlements, advancement and prosperity. So, and it's by G.T. Ridlin, and it was first written or, or it was first published in um, 1895. Okay. Now, oh golly, I already forgot what page I was on. It was 330 something. Um, oh no, here it is. I got there. 322. So let me back this up a little so that I can see it better. Wow. This, this crazy thing. All right. So after the Cochrane craze, I don't understand why this is highlighting everything. There we go. So the Cochrane craze, he says here, and, and the previous chapter is about Cochranism and the whole history of it. And then he says the Cochrane craze paved the, way, paved the way for a Mormon invasion in the Saco Valley. A full-blooded Cochranite made a first-class Mormon saint. Jake Cochrane was a John the Baptist for the Mormon apostles who appeared on his old battleground and gathered up the spoils. The inhabitants of the river towns, as well as some in the interior, were afflicted with Cochranite grasshoppers, followed by Mormon locusts. <laughs> anyway, he goes on and on, but it, this is interesting. It says, the history of the Mormon church makes Brigham Young come to Maine in 1832 or 1833. The doctrine preached by Smith, Pratt, and Young in York County was not of an offensive nature. It was properly speaking, millenarianism. Okay. So, but it was Brigham Young and some of the other members of the 12 who had gone on a mission to the Eastern States who made contact with this Cochrane group. Um, anyway, and you can read this history if you want. So that's that. Um, also, the Joseph Smith Papers. Um, if you look up Saco, Maine and Young, as in Brigham Young, okay, then you will find that he was, um, he and some of the other members of the 12 were sent to do a conference in Saco, Maine in 1835. Um, I believe it's 1835 um, in September. So there is definitely information in, um, and this is the record of the 12th from the 14th of February to the 28th of August, 1835. Okay. There is definitely information in our record showing that Brigham Young and some of the other members of the 12 definitely labored in Saco, Maine, where they would have been introduced to the, the doctrine of spiritual wivery. It's really interesting. Then, um, Okay, this is, that is actually the PDF of this book. So if you want to go through and read the findings that they um, found, it's called Joseph Smith Fought Polygamy. It's in the restorationbookstore.org, okay? Um, then, and this um, Saco Valley Settlements and Families, Historical, Biographicals, and so forth. Um, the copy of that that I got is from archive.org where you can actually, they've taken pictures of every page of the book and you can read it. And um, then there's this wonderful website called Joseph Smith Exonerated, okay? Um, where he goes through some of the things that um, were a concern to me, like what is the everlasting covenant? Just pretty fascinating. That's a topic for another time. Um, Jacob 230, you know, and the fact that um, poly polygamy was um, an abomination before the Lord. Um, he talks about Doctrine and Covenant section 132. Um, anyway, there's some really good information on this website. Um, then, then if you go over here, you have Hemlock Knots. And he has a podcast. I've actually never listened to any of his podcasts. But um, I went over here to Topics. And under Polygamy, you have a timeline of events, Polygamy quotes, scriptural teachings, polygamists in the scriptures, origins of LDS polygamy, and reactions to polygamy. 
this is really well researched and documented information that's put together in a very um, easy to read and follow um, format. Okay, like here you are. So you have, this is the timeline. Um, so you, for instance, 1822, November 22nd, Heber C. Kimball lawfully marries Violet Murray, who bore him 10 children. 1824, October 8th, Brigham Young lawfully marries Mary Angeline Works, who bore him two children. She died in 1832. 1827, Joseph Smith Jr. lawfully marries Emma Hill. Anyway, it starts going through it. And then, um, right. And then you have um, 1829, Joseph Smith Jr. receives the Lord's law via revelation, quote, and again, I command thee that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. DNC 1925, March 1830, Joseph Smith Jr. publishes the Book of Mormon, which strongly condemns polygamy. Jacob 115, Jacob 2, 23 through 35, Jacob 3, 5 through 7, Mosiah 11, 1 through 2, and Mosiah 4, 14, and declares monogamy is the means by which the Lord used to raise seed unto himself. First Nephi 7, 1, First Nephi 16, 7 through 8, and Jacob 2, 25. This passage is later interpreted as if God needs to raise up seed, he'll command polygamy. Despite there being zero historical precedent, precedent for that strategy, including in the cases where raising up seed was never more urgent, such as Adam and Eve, Noah, Noah's sons, Lehi, Lehi's sons, etc. Um, anyway, and it goes on and on. I mean, it's just a wealth of information. Then you've got, um, so these are some of the books that I have um, been led to other than the Saco Valley book. So there's Joseph Smith Revealed, A Faithful Telling, um, written by Whitney Horning. She's wonderful. Um, Well-documented book. Definitely leads to the conclusion that Joseph Smith was never a polygamist. Um, this one I have not read yet. Let me go back one. I didn't mean to hit that. The Exoneration of Emma joseph and hiram i haven't read that one yet i only have a sample so far so i can't speak to that one but it is recommended reading um so i'm hoping to get to that one pretty soon then you have the times and seasons now this is fascinating so i got this from centerplace.org um this is um these are the uh, like online library of what was originally the restored church. I think it's now the community of Christ. I'm not sure. But the bottom line is that it's a lot easier to go and read the times and seasons there in the church. Um, there are individual pages of the times and seasons, not the entire, um, not, not entire uh, newspapers. Okay. Thanks, darling. Mm -hmm. mm, I love, love you. you. <laughs> See you in a minute. Right. Okay. Take my water with me. Oh, that's a good idea. It's hot out there, Are isn't you it? Talking to somebody? I am doing a video. You know me, I'm on a quest. Love you. Love you too. So that was my sweet husband. So this is um Times and Seasons, City of Nauvoo. Monday, August 1st, 1842. Anyway, in the Joseph Smith papers, I've not been able to find that there are entire um, editions of the papers. I don't, I know that's not the right word. Um, but anyway, they just have specific pages that they pulled out that relate to something um, in the history. Also, um, the other place you can get to it is from BYU, but they're just... Um, pictures of the actual pages and they're not very clean um so they're kind of hard to read and hard to get around they're very slow and hard to get around and so i just find it easier to read these papers here now this paper is really important to understanding what was going on so this is this is the paper that joseph smith was in charge of uh, or he was the editor of okay in the city of Nauvoo, this is Monday, August 1st, 1842. Now, if you go and you do some research, you're going to learn about John C. Bennett. All right. Um, he was purported to be a very evil man and 
probably the father of polygamy in Nauvoo, but you know, I'm gonna let you decide. Anyway, this times and seasons. Um, so let me just go back up to the top of it. So it starts out here. Okay. The name of this one is truth will prevail. It was August 1st, 1842. If you scroll down, um, then you get to the stuff about John C. Bennett. And this first article is an article written by Joseph Smith um, explaining um, what was going on with John C. Bennett. And then you've got an affidavit of the city council. Then you've got an affidavit of Hiram Smith. Then you've got, um, right, so let me just go on down. Oh, you've got all of these other, all of these other affidavits. Um, let's see, there's the end of Hiram Smith, affidavit of William Law. There's the next one I was looking for. Um, then you've got certificate of Elias and F.M. Higby. Certificate of Miss Pamela and Michael. All of this, all of this is about the battle to wipe out polygamy in Nauvoo um, and showing that Joseph Smith was fighting against polygamy. And this was 1842. And supposedly he married his first polygamous wife in 1841. Something else I'm going to, to make a note of here in a second. So... Um, from Sangamo Journal, Bennett as he is, Bennett as he was. Anyway, it goes on and on and on from the Bostonian. This is all the way to here, um, all about this filthy thing that's going on that John C. Bennett is involved in. And he was a very powerful man in Nauvoo. At this point, he was the mayor. He was the, um, um, he had written the, ch the city charter. He was, I believe, the general of the militia there. Um, he also was highly involved in um, the, oh, what is that called? Um, oh, what is that called? the, um, hang on, I'm going to pause this while I remember what I'm trying to say. Right, so he was highly involved with the, the Mason, actually, the largest Masonic lodge I read somewhere, I don't remember the reference, in the state of Illinois was built there in Nauvoo. Um, okay, so moving on. So this is a really good source to look at. And it's at centerplace.org. Now, another place where um, the, another thing that I found interesting when I was doing some research is I was trying to understand where are people even getting these documents for who Joseph Smith supposedly was married to? Where are they even getting this information? Because I keep seeing these assertions, but I'm not seeing any source documents. So... I found this um, article in the Interpreter, a journal of Latter-day Saint faith and scholarship. Um, it's called Dating Joseph Smith's First Nauvoo Ceilings by Brian C. Hales. And it's really interesting because he tells us right here, within the historical document supporting a plural ceiling between Prescindia and the prophet are seven that provide a year, okay? So this is really interesting. So here's the documents that this historian is listing to show that Joseph Smith was a polygamist. The only one that existed during his life because he was martyred in 1844, the only one that um, was during his life was 1842, Bennett, The History of the Saints, 256, lists as one of Joseph's wives, Miss Blank Prescindia married. Okay, so, but this is interesting. Bennett's History of the Saints is something that he wrote 
after remember we I just showed you the huge um, that the entire newspaper was dedicated to how filthy and foul he was right and he and I just told you how powerful he was Thank you, Mom. you're I welcome you. I love you too oh, that, that was good so right so the history of the saints was something that he wrote in retaliation for being excommunicated and thrown out based chased out of Nauvoo <laughs> hardly hardly um, an unbiased work you know I I think this is just hilarious that they're using that as some kind of historical document um, indicating who his wives were the next thing is after his death his death was 1846 this is two years later look at this Nauvoo temple proxy marriage to Joseph Smith February 4th 1846 so he's dead has nothing to say about anything and this woman is being married to Joseph Smith by proxy after his death and this is proof that he's a polygamist and that he was actually married to this woman hardly then you have 1848 Zena Huntington Young notice Huntington Young do not tell me that she doesn't have um, have a have a dog in the fight I mean hello Brigham Young was secretly practicing polygamy as early as 1842 when Joseph Smith was fighting against it um, and anyway this is hilarious so her journal who is and this journal entry is written long after the fact this is now 1848 and once again Joseph Smith was martyred in 1844 so she puts this little statement Monday December earliest of any uh, 11 1848 oh there's got to be something wrong here Monday December 11th 1848 oh I see there's a column Zena Huntington recorded in her journal quote this morning my sister Priscilla moved seven years ago today since Priscilla was sealed to Joseph Smith okay okay so how does that prove that she was actually married to Joseph Smith that Joseph Smith actually physically married her during his life then you've got these other accounts that are so far I mean 1866 and he died in 44 so this is 22 years after his death now we have Wilford Woodruff coming up with the date of December 11 1840 in his journal 1869 what 1869 Priscilla then puts in her journal that she was married on December 11 1841 you've got 1869 again Dimmick Huntington um, 1869 Fanny Huntington 1881 anyway as you can see it's just getting farther and farther and farther from the event and these things are being recorded by people who are in Salt Lake City who have followed Brigham Young the polygamist this is hardly evidence and this is an example of what the church has used and continues to use to continue this narrative that polygamy is a foundational doctrine in the church and that it was taught by Joseph Smith and that the and then we have the section 132 revelation which is very problematic in and of itself so anyway here's some if you want to go do some research yourself here are some links that will get you started.